It is absolutely not a Monday, but I have Monstera for you. I don't know what day this is gonna come out. If it turns up on a Monday, then I'll just say I timed it that way. So I've got a couple of Monstera here. I've got another one off camera that I will show you in a bit. It may be a secret, it may not be, because it's probably in the title of this video, but I'll pretend it's a secret and you guys can kind of pretend along with me. So what do I have for you today? I have Monstera Albo. I have Mystery Plant. Uh, you'll figure this one out when we get there. Uh, it's maybe not easy to tell exactly what it is from the juvenile size, and I got this as a cutting, so it was pretty tiny. I also managed to underwater it temporarily and it browned off one of the bottom leaves but at the same time it's a beautiful plant i love it and it's already starting to size up which is really cool i am hoping against hope that i can get through three of these monstera today you know that's the goal welcome back i'm nick and this is propist oh this is a table propist is just going on around us i have a couple of monstera to show you here today you know one of them's kind of off camera you can see this is a monstera album over here i have another mysterious monstera that i will describe to you in a little bit more detail a little bit later assuming i can get this guy to sit still because he really doesn't want to sit still this is part of the problem i need to repot this guy he is in this ridiculously tall plastic cup which is absolutely the wrong shape and i'm taking this off at my own peril here because I'm gonna have to put it back on there again. This monster is in a ridiculous size cup and I, I get the reasoning for this, you know, like have, having the entire root encompassed in substrate is great. At the same time, this thing will not stand still for the life of it. So I really need to A, get it out of this container and into something a little bit more conducive to growing. B, I need to put it on a pole because it's already put out this first shoot. It's got what looks like the beginnings of another leaf coming here. I would like to get it on a moss pole Probably not a moss pole. We'll see what we end up doing there, but on something so it can climb and size up a little bit. So it already gave me a pretty good size first leaf. You can see there, let me just show that a little bit closer. It has pretty nice marbled variegation. I'd say it's kind of like 30% variegated. It's got that good candy cane striping on the stem. That initial node was very well variegated. So when I purchased it, it was this cutting here with the original mid cut and the one leaf and it had a node that was activated on the side here which has since popped out this guy and is now starting to pop out yet another guy as you can see right there so awesome it's growing really well i kept it isolated for the last month or so it's been sitting in of all places my furnace room i don't actually have a furnace anymore i moved to uh, an air handler unit with a heat pump outside so it's not quite as hot in that room as it used to be but it's still kind of a let's say non-humid environment and it's not the greatest for a monstera i mean monstera are so thick and hardy that it's been doing fine in there but you can see it's already kind of starting to crisp off the tips of the catafil and I, I just think it's time to get it out of there i was really kind of protecting myself and the rest of my collection from any potential bugs on there. I've sprayed it down a couple of times here over the course of the last few weeks. So far, no indication of any kind of bugs, so I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm super paranoid about pests now. I have been for the better part of the last year and a half. Summer of 2021 was my first encounter with thrips. I have had one more encounter with thrips since then, and I really don't want to encounter them again on a regular basis. I don't have a problem with pests in my collection in general. I can deal with them as they come, but a huge thrips outbreak that takes out, you know, 50% of your collection is no fun. Never again. That was the first time I dealt with thrips and, you know, I kind of swore to myself I would be a lot more proactive about A, ventilation, because that was the number one culprit there. B, keeping my plants a little bit more separated and C, proactively working with either beneficials or sprays, depending on what I'm working on. Since I'm in semi-hydro most of the time, I tend to lean towards the beneficials for my pest prevention. I'll link a couple of the bugs that I use on a regular basis. I'll show you guys a screenshot up here. And I purchased those from a company called GrowLive here in Canada, which I think is out in Ontario. Last I checked, I've used them a number of times. The bugs last about kind of in anywhere from like two to six weeks, depending on what you get. I first learned about these beetles. I guess their entomological name would be Aureus insidiosus. So I first learned about these guys from, I think it was Plantarior Decorator, who had a really, really good video on pest control and using beneficials for that purpose. I'll link the video in the description if you're interested. It was really awesome. She has a couple of videos that talk about beneficials that are really worth watching. Also, her channel is great, so check it out. She's also in Canada, so props to another Canadian plant 
YouTuber. I uh, have been using those beneficials kind of off and on. So what I do is I tend to rotate. I'll do the Orias and I'll do one of the Cucumeris or something like that for a six week gap. At six weeks, they're pretty much all dead unless they've actually been reproducing in your environment, which in most household environments is rare, unless you've got like perfect conditions for them to keep on reproducing. So my assumption in most cases is that by six weeks, they're dead. I don't see a whole lot of evidence of them by that point. And there's usually not a lot of other bugs left unless you had a big outbreak. At that point, just wipe them out. Then I tend to go and spray down my plants with something like Safer's and all. In Canada, we can't easily get some of the other pest control things like Azimax or Bonide. They're available, but you have to get through through nefarious means or through people who have direct lines to the States or something like that. And, you know, if people are crossing the border on a regular basis, that's where I tend to find it. But, you know, I've got a little bit of Azimax and a little bit of Bonide floating around, but Safer's and all is a lot easier to get your hands on. And it works for the most part. So I tend to use that the majority of the time. So the tangent on biologicals and pest control aside, I tend to keep these guys isolated as I add them to my collection. So I've had this now for, I want to say between four and six weeks. It was at first leaf, not super well variegated, but variegated enough. But I mean, the stem was really promising here. Uh, it was pretty much half and half and it has a bit of the candy cane striping. The new growth point, etc., looks really good too. So I feel like we're gonna have a good elbow out of here. What I like to do is get the leaves to size up a bit. So I think putting it on a pole makes sense too. And I'm gonna move this into semi-hydro. So we'll take a look at the roots while we're at it. I think there's a few dried out roots in here. I don't know how old they are. I don't know what the root condition is like actually. So yeah, it's gonna be an interesting experiment to see what's going on. The other plant that I have here, that I'll show you real quick before we move on. This is a uh, Monstera lechleriana. This is the variegated lechleriana. It's kind of got this cream variegation that it starts off creamy and then it hardens off a bit more white at the end of the day. I'm a big fan of this plant. I've had a regular green lechleriana for a couple of years. <laughs> the only complaint I'd have is that A, it grows like a weed and it vines like crazy. And if you don't put it on a pole, it tends to just go completely bonkers. The other thing I say is that it drinks a lot of water. It's just like your typical Monstera. And it's also a bit of a, a pest magnet, or at least the one that I had was. I'm not a big fan of that plain green one specifically because it seemed to attract pests no matter what. I, I don't know if the pest came with the plant. There's a good chance of that, that that plant actually had the pest to begin with and it's just been propagated and carried the pest over through propagations. So far this one, I have kept not in full isolation like I had this one in a humidity container isolated with five or six other plants and it hasn't shown any sign of pests. I did give it a good spray down when I first got it. Since then it's been sitting in there with no sign of anything going on and it's also been rooting up a storm down here. I got this it had a couple of leaves at the bottom. I think the bottom like maybe four or five small leaves uh, and then it's put on the last one, two, three, four, five I think possibly six leaves since then. So it's been sitting in a box for a couple of months. It's been under a grow light, but it's been in a prop box effectively, but in its pot. And I think it's time to take a look at what we're looking at roots wise. I don't know if it's ready to propagate or not. I'm kind of tempted to let it size up a little bit first. And I think worst case, I think what I'll do here is probably just put it on a small pole to like let it keep sizing up. Cause right now it's just got this wooden kitchen skewer that I had chopped in half to be able to fit inside that box. And this guy can now comfortably go into my grow tent. So I feel confident putting it in there. So I'm going to get rid of this stick, put it on a pole and then pop it in the grow tent. I don't know that it actually needs a repot just yet. So we'll probably give that some time before I repot it. My mystery plant, I have it sitting over here off camera. Uh, I have my trusty, trusty, this is brand new. I have this brand new potting mat that I picked up and I'm gonna see how this works. I'm not sure about the size yet. It does work size-wise on my little table here. It might be a little big for filming, but you know, we'll see. All right, so I've pushed things back a bit. I know the entire table is not in frame, but you can probably see most of it here. I've got my tray here. I'm going to start with this guy, and I'm going to empty this sucker out because, A, I, I keep most of my plants in semi-hydro, and my experience with Monstera, particularly Monstera deliciosa, and I mean, this being a Borsigiana, but still, like, they love semi-hydro, and I've got bucket of luck and ready to go here. Why don't we get moving, get this thing out of its container. I would really like to see what kind of condition the roots are in because I'm not a big fan of this container. I see what looks like some dried out roots in here. I'll put that up here so you guys can see. I think there's a couple of roots that look kind of dried out. I'm gonna 
maybe have a few issues or have to chop some off. I've got my uh, my snips here. Fisker's brand I'm a fan of. I've got my shears and we'll get this repotted in semi-hydro. So let's start off by taking this guy out. The soil is a little on the damp side of the top. I did water this a couple of days ago, so hoping that the rest of the roots are okay. It's really rooted in here. It's packed pretty tight in this medium. It looks mostly like a combination of soil with some perlite. Not my favorite mix. It's not the chunkiest. If we're gonna go with soil, I prefer something a lot chunkier. I really don't like what I'm seeing with these roots. There's quite a bit of moisture in here. So we'll see what this looks like. I'm gonna pick this clean. I might go rinse them off so you guys can get a better look. I'll we'll start off by picking off what dirt I can here. Another reason I'm not a fan personally of soil is just I like to be able to see the condition of the roots. This is moist. It doesn't look like it's too bad. I probably got a bit of root rot going on here. So we'll see what we have to chop off. Oh, I think what I'll do is once I get this soil off, I'm going to give the roots a rinse so you can see better what we're getting into. There are some chunky bits in here. There's some orchid bark, it looks like. Um, it's pretty spongy. Yeah, the roots are pretty moist here. I'm not a huge fan of like how wet they are. This container is clearly packed way too tight for my liking. I like a lot more aeration in my roots and I'm a bit worried that we're gonna have to take off a good chunk of the roots here that are just really welded into this soil. So we'll take this off and if you guys can get a good look at what's going on here. Uh, most of the roots look okay, but there's definitely a bit of root rot. Yeah, there's some dried out roots too. But yeah, like the, I think the main kind of tap root looks pretty good. That main aerial root that this was originally rooted off looks good. There's some whitish looking roots here. Lots of root branching. I honestly don't know how well rooted it was when I got it, but you know, this looks decent for what it is. Let's just kind of peel off what we can here and then we're gonna go rinse it off. All right, so I'm back. I've done some rinsing of these roots. It doesn't look nearly as bad as I expected. There is a little bit of root rot. I think it was actually mostly just desiccation. There were some dried out roots, but the majority of these are looking pretty good. They're pretty white. I mean, there's still some soil on there. I can only get so much off. I did soak it for a few minutes just to make sure, but I got what I could get off by hand. The rest of this is just gonna have to adapt. I never have too much of a problem moving from soil to Leka. I find that they behave reasonably well. You're gonna get some root rot no matter what you do, but these secondary roots off the big aerial there are looking nice. And I mean, there's a few where you can see that, you know, the outer root shell has kind of gone or these ones here are dried out i'm just going to chop these guys off right now before i pot this guy up what i'm doing here is i'm taking off any roots where i've pulled like the entire root casing off because it was already either dried or it was rotten in, in most of these cases they were just dried out husks so they were going to come off anyways this is just to prevent like kind of further rot from setting in in the plant when it's actually in its new environment there's only a handful of these they're not there's not too many of them out there if i see those i just take them off It's never going to be fully perfect, but you do what you can to get the uh, the most egregious bits off. And then the rest of it, you just hope it's going to either fall off on its own. In most cases, this will. Yeah, good enough. This shows you what that root system looks like there. Not particularly elaborate of a root system, but I mean, it was in a very small container and, you know, it's been sitting in a closet, to be honest, for like the last month and a half. I think I'm also going to take off this caterpillar here, which is now a little soggy since I gave the whole thing a rinse. I find that these caterpillars are just like bug attractors too, so take that off. I'll leave the rest of it to kind of dry off on its own. I don't want to force it. And there's just a little bit of dried caterpillar that I peeled off elsewhere. Still got that growth point looking good there. So I think there's actually a secondary node here. So if we've got one node, two nodes. Yeah. And then your leaf. So yeah, we're looking good here. I'm going to pot this up. I have to angle it a little bit here, get it growing upwards. Um, I think kind of this way looks pretty good. So now my next call is what pot to use for this. I've got a few pots here for semi-hydro that I think one of them I've used before for anthuriums. This will be my first time using it with a Monstera. The other two are brand new and I've never tried them before. So this is gonna be an interesting experiment. So I'm gonna try the smallest one I've got first. Uh, this is a six inch square-ish pot at the top. 
round at the bottom. This is a self-watering pot. You can see here it's got a gauge at the bottom. This is not one of the, the kind of um, water level based gauges. This is purely just like the amount of water in the container. I can see if the water is up to here and that's where basically the base of the inner pot inside is. This is not much of a net pot. I would say this is probably a little closer to being more of an orchid pot in terms of style, but it has no slits down the sides, nothing except for uh, some drainage at the bottom. You could potentially run some wicking through there. They do give you the helpful tip. No matter where I'm from, my dreams are valid. So I'm glad to have that validation. Thank you so much. Um, I'll link these pots in the description below, whether I decide to use it or not. Just useful to have these guys. Uh, I did have actually a previous video that's a semi-hydro gear guide where I went through a number of semi-hydro friendly pots, whether they're self-watering or they're good cash pose that can hold a net pot, etc. This was not one of them. And the other one I have over here was also not one of them because I purchased these recently. And these are kind of experimental. I like to see if they're any good or not so it's, it's got a pretty good deep container on it which i don't mind the problem with this though for a monstera is that it's not going to be the greatest for putting a pole in here it's a little on the narrow side tall and narrow i kind of think i could use this with an anthurium a little better so i might save these guys for anthurium the second pot i have over here this one here is one i showed in my semi-hydro gear video earlier this one is garden basics i believe garden basics you can read that there um, this guy has more of a net pot on the inside. It's again a self-watering pot. It's got the, the wicking set up so you don't actually have to put your own wicking in here. It's got these feet that kind of go down to the bottom and inside there. So you can fill it with your substrate all the way down to the bottom. These ones are okay. I like these. I prefer these for pond. For Leka, just because of the size of those little feet areas that that go down towards the base of the pot. Those ones, not the greatest for LECA. They are not big enough to hold large LECA, so which means that your LECA is not gonna make it all the way down there, which means realistically you need to run a wick down here and not just depend on the substrate itself. So for anthuriums, these are great. I like this. I have my, my bigger Ace of Spades is in there. Gonna use it for a couple of my other ones that I still need to repot. So this guy, the Garden Basics, is a seven inch pot. The inner net pot clearly is not seven inch, but I mean, the outer pot is. Another note about this guy here is that you can see inside the Garden Basics, it's got this hole here. This is for a water gauge. I don't have this one assembled but I'll drop a link in the description below. You can see that basically this gauge just sits in this spot here. I won't assemble it right now, so I'm not gonna use this pot, but it pops in here. It basically has a little float inside that pushes up as the water level raises. So as opposed to being a gauge on the side, which just shows you the like straight up actual water level, it's up here and it's showing you the water level at the bottom of the pot by the height vertical position of the float inside of it, which you know effectively is kind of the same thing, but I find this just a little easier to see. I don't mind it. The only thing I'd say is that that gauge spot eats up like a good kind of sixth of your pot maybe not quite a sixth but big enough of a space in there that it eats up space for a pole as well so these are good for anthuriums i think for anything that's a climber there's not a good spot to hook up a pole on here either and i can't even zip tie it on here comfortably because there's just no spots there's no slits on the side and i've got this gap eaten up by the gauge so not a huge fan of these for philodendrons or monsteras. I think for this specific use case, I will probably take a pass. Last but not least, I don't know the name of this. This is um, clearly not quite as great of a quality level, but I think pot-wise probably is the one I'm going to end up using. I mean, I don't think any of these are ideal, but I think in terms of root mass, this is probably going to work okay, at least for the time being. So this guy is a 6.7 inch. The cash bow part at least is 6.7 inch. This dude here has sort of a net pot inside of it. I mean, it's about as close to a net pot as you can get. It's, it's not quite the same kind of materials as the net pots that I usually use, but it's got room to run some wicking through the base here, which is good. And second, it does have some slits on the side, which may not be obvious to you. I guess you can see that through the light. Those slits probably will let me run zip ties through here so I can put a moss pole or a pole in here because I'm not gonna be using moss. Let's just size this up first. I mean, again, this root system is not huge. I do think I can fit this comfortably in here. It just may have to lean a little bit one way or the other. So if I twist it around a bit, can I get this and a pole in here? Yeah, okay, I think this will work. Take a look and see. I 
think I can fit that in comfortably. I'm gonna run my Lekka in here first. So let's Lekka this up, put this guy down for a moment. So I have a number of poles over here from North Shore Tropicals. These are the flat pack poles that I showed in my semi-hydro video. From the smallest size up to kind of the medium size, and then I have a separate style in extra large. This is the smallest size probably not going to do the job here i do think that I, i'm not going to go all the way up to the biggest size i'm going to do the old kind of goldilocks thing here these are the uh kind of small through medium size and then i've got the extra large i don't think i'm going to use but you can at least see how big it is this is pretty large and i think for my use case right today i don't think i'm going to go with this one yet uh, by the time I go to that guy, I'm going to need a larger pot anyhow, so I think I'll just wait until I upsize the pot before I go with that big of a hole. So these guys are cool, these these little flat pack boss bowls, in that they have these little tabs at the bottom. You can or cannot cut them off depending on what you're doing. Um, if you want things to hold on pretty tight, like depending on where you want the pole to start to, you can leave them on. If you've got a bigger pole, you can kind of cut it off. I know Kevin at Hakuna Planta cuts these guys off. I think it'll be kind of a case by case basis for me. You have, with the smallest pole size, there's only one notch to fold these around. So they fold pretty small. I'll show you a photo of what it looks like with one of the smaller poles. I think I've got one of my other plants from a previous video on there. This is kind of like the, the medium size, I guess. I think this is in the neighborhood of like 14 inches. This one might work for my use case here. Uh, it's still a little on the small side. I think I'm probably gonna go with the next one up. So that knocks these kind of medium size up. So this is, I believe, large. And then the other one I showed you, the clear one was extra large. So this, I think will work for what I'm doing right now. So this is about 16 inches, something like that. You can take a look here. There's four different size notches to work with. Just because I'm using a reasonably small pot here, I think I'm gonna go on the tightest notch. Also, we'll see how it fits the Lekka, but yes, I'm gonna use Lekka for these. I've been using Lekka poles with wicking running through them so far with the plants that I've currently got on these poles and pretty happy with it so far. It's been keeping the Lekka moist all the way up as long as I run enough wicking through there. I think I can use my kind of larger gauge wicking with this, which should be good. So I'm just gonna put this pole together real quick here uh, to find the folds. So I'm just kind of going with the direction that the plastic is already curving in to put this thing together. The fold is kind of going one way, but I find the curve of the plastic kind of going the other way. So I'm just gonna go with the direction of the plastic and make my life easier assembling this thing. So I'm just kind of folding along the, the notched line here where there's like a pre-cut. So here we go. Let's wrap this guy around. Let's tighten it up a bit. It's kind of like a half cylinder at the end of the day. And it's got these tabs that just plug in on the side. Gonna have to fast forward through this shit, that's for sure. So that was by far the easiest way to do this, to lay the flat portion of the pole down flat and then just tuck everything in because the resistance is pretty good and it really wanted to pop open. This is good. I think we're all clicked in along the whole pole and it looks pretty good. So I can see you down there. So there we go, finished product all assembled. So now in this pole, I know it's gonna look a little bit ridiculous. No, nah, it's not too bad. I think that's how we want this guy to climb the pole. Directionally, we want this to kind of go up this way. I can always adjust this later, but I think I'm gonna zip tie this down at the bottom here with one zip tie. Should be enough to get through. I could probably pop it the honeycombs in here as well. I run it through the honeycombs at the bottom. So I have my handy zip ties. We want a big long one. I wanna use the biggest size zip tie that I've got. I hope this will be big enough. These are like 12 plus inch zip ties. Let's wrap this guy around. Take him out of his pot for a second. Like I want to get the maximum height off of this thing so I don't want to cut the tabs off, which means it's going to be a little floppy at the bottom, but I think once I put the Lekka in there, that'll settle things down. So let's find the largest gap available here. There we go. So we do fit. It fits pretty good. I can pull that right through. And we're going to thread it through the honeycomb on the front here at the base and then wrap around. I might be able to fit two of them in here, we'll see. All right, let's do this again. But we'll center it instead. Okay, tuck it in through.
this is holding in somewhat. I want to tighten it up a little bit. Probably do the trim at the end here. I don't want to completely lose shape on my moss pole at the same time. Calling it a moss pole is definitely a misnomer, but I want it to sit reasonably flush against the edge there. So I think that's pretty decent. Let's see if I can put yet another zip die in here. I think I can fit one more a little bit higher up. It's definitely pulling the whole pot to one side, which will be fine once it's actually in there. So I'm going to give that a chop once I'm finished potting. I'm going to use one more zip tie, I think, to keep it in place. I don't know if I actually need to. There you go, that's pretty good. Two of these should hold in pretty good. So I just kind of don't want it falling out or having any troubles. That seems to work okay. I will tighten these up to about the same tension level. We're snug enough that we're not squishing the moss pole too bad. I know I'm covering my own face here, which is maybe not the greatest move. It's about as tight as we need to get. I'm going to now chop these dudes. And hopefully these will not interfere with the pot, which they don't, which is great. So there we go. So we've got our moss pole hooked up, ready to rock. First things first, what we need to do now is the wick. So I've got a couple of different thicknesses of wicking here. I'm just gonna pop this back into the pot real quick for a second. Take a look at the whole size. I think I'm good with my larger. I think this is like this. I want to say this is a quarter inch and my other wicking is a sixth of an inch. I may be wrong. I will link the wicking that I end up using in the description below. This is like a 150 foot pack, which is more than enough to do a lot of things. But when you start using it for these moss poles, it does start eating through quite a bit of wicking. So I, thankfully it's not particularly dramatically expensive but it's, uh, it's worth keeping an eye on how much you're using. For a pole this size, I'm going to be using a pretty decent amount. Like I'm gonna run two wicks up and down here. So let's first untangle this a little bit. So let's run this guy from the base up. And I want this to drag a little bit at the bottom of the pot. I want it to kind of have a little bit of slack inside of the moss pole so that I can kind of zigzag through there. So I'm gonna run this through the pole and cut at the bottom so I can get a good sense of how much I'm using. So let's feed this through. Uh, it's a bit frayed at that end so I kind of want that part to be coming out the bottom. It will wick better anyways. So let's see this fits through without any trouble which is nice. So there we go. I'm running my wick through the bottom. I want to have like probably you want it sitting in the reservoir and wrapping a little bit around to kind of get some some motion going on. So I think the reservoir is about two inches, inch and a half, two inches below. So I probably can do, I'd say about that much is enough. I want to sit on the base and have that much at the bottom slack wise. So I'll just kind of sit it down so it traps it there. And I want this to have some slack inside. And I'm gonna let it run out the top a bit so I have a little bit of extra. I can connect to another wick if I need to. Just do that there. Sorry, I'm using my plant scissors for this because I couldn't find my good scissors. They're around here somewhere. I think my kids hit it on me. That's one. I'm just going to pull it out real quick so I can just measure a second one the same length. And I will just go, yeah, this long. So this is about two and a half feet of wicking. And that's enough. So chop. So now I've got my two strands here. I'm going to run these through, both of them. Now let's feed these guys through down into the bottom. And then we are good. Actually, this pot is working out pretty much exactly like I want it to. So what I may try and do is find larger size of these guys and work with those too. So I've got a decent amount of slack in here. I want these guys to sit with about that much at the bottom. And those will go in the bottom of the pot here. And then the rest of this is going to be kind of folded up inside as I put the leca in. So let's start off by putting a bottom layer of leca in my net pot. Just the bottom layer there. Pop that guy in, Mr. Plant. Mr. Albo Borsigiana can get in here. I want it kind of to lean up against the pot. I'm not going to put the original mid-cut chunk here into the actual pot. I want it to just kind of sit on top and I want the root system to be living inside the pot. So I'm just kind of tucking it in that way. I want this guy to kind of crawl right off the, uh, the base here. And it's not too low down, which works as well. So let's start backfilling now. This Leka is pretty washed. Uh, make sure you rinse your leca. You don't need to let it soak overnight, at least I don't. I don't find that necessary. Um, but definitely washing off the, the dust is pretty helpful. And I want to make sure all the roots are covered and I want the stem to not be particularly covered. I'm going to plant tape this guy in here too. I don't want to cover up this stem too much. I just want to kind of sit on top there. Let's do a little bit to tuck in. 
I'll show you guys a close up in a moment of what this looks like. I'm gonna plant tape this sucker on here. I've got enough to go around here. So that I think will be good. I'm gonna give it a little extra to give it some room to grow. So there we go, a little bit of plant tape, didn't hurt anybody. I can adjust this as the plant grows upwards. For now, that will be good. The next trick here is to fill this guy up without spilling like everywhere. So I'm gonna fill up this pole and I'm gonna kind of slowly tuck the wicking in as I go. So I'm gonna gently, without losing my wicks. This is always fun. I'm probably going to need a little bit more Leca because I'm kind of running out here. You're going to get some of the Leca falling out the front. I mean, yeah, you can tape it up if you want. I only need enough for, to fill the bottom, so I'm definitely not filling this up all the way to the top. Having done this enough times, once the Leca settles in and once some roots start getting in there, you'll find that it just sits still without falling out too much, which is nice. So, I mean, it sounds kind of weird to have Leca in a moss pole, but it does work reasonably well. You do need the kind of chunkier like to be up there and not the tiny granules. And then this wicking, you kind of want that to run through here pretty evenly. So I'm just gonna tuck the wicking in a little bit. So it's kind of bunching together in one spot. And you definitely don't want to lose it like I just did. So I'm gonna tape that wicking to the top so that I don't lose it. Tuck this in here so it doesn't go anywhere, okay? I think we've got enough. So this will start growing against here and it can root against it. I'm losing Leca everywhere because using an orchid pot to hold Leca is maybe not the smartest move. So what I will do instead is use this net pot that has way less holes in it. So yeah, you'll, you'll get some stuff bouncing out there, but most of it holds in. So he's going to rattle around a little bit in here, but once he roots, should be in pretty good shape. Here's the plant. And it's tied on pretty snugly on here. I'm going to move the water gauge out to the front so I can see it. I will now fill this up with my nutrient solution. The advantage here also is that these slits are pretty small so the roots should stay hopefully self-contained inside of that net pot and not sit in the actual water too much. And I've got my wicking sitting below that will go into the water. So assuming this all works correctly, we should stay nice and moist all the way up top here. The other option you could throw in here is to throw in some extra wicking. So I'll see how this behaves because with a pot this size, it might need more than two wicks, but let's just give it a shot and see how it goes. Pretty satisfied with this so far. So the other thing I should mention with this guy here is that I did not use any kind of mycorrhizal inoculant on here because I don't have any right now. I'm out of my mic that I was using previously. I think I may have mentioned it in one of my previous videos. If I didn't, I was using that one. In the interim, I typically use that outside in my vegetable garden, but I actually have some great white on order that I'm gonna test out. So. In the interim, the mic that I have is not water soluble, so trying to mix it in here means that it's not going to play too nice, uh, or at least I don't know how it's going to behave. And the great white I have is back order or something like that, so ordered from Amazon, waiting for it to show up. So in the short term, I am not using any, but I guess the next time I repot this guy, I will have some water soluble myco to throw on there, so I'll use it at that point. So next up, this guy here, what I really wanted to take a look at was A, the condition of the roots, B, is there any chance of propagating this right now? And C, I think I'm going to put it onto one of the small moss poles I've got over here, and that might require digging out a little bit of the leco. So we'll take a look. I don't, I don't want to mess with the roots on this guy too bad because it's got a new leaf popping out right here, and I don't want to mess with that new leaf, so I will hopefully not disturb it too much. I would love to get this Lechleriana to size up a little bit before I chop it. I just wanted to take a look because right now it's bound pretty tightly with the velcro plant tape and that's been there since the plant was like bound here and these were like the the top leaves were here so in the last month it's put on at least two maybe three new leaves in its container and i think it's time to at least get this plant tape off and put it onto a proper pole so it can actually size up correctly what's pretty cool though is that you can see the already the size difference between the top three leaves including that new one and the bottom like half dozen or more leaves it started off really tiny and it's already worked its way up i think the first leaf i put out in my care was this one or this one and then this guy came afterwards and then these three and they're all really nicely variegated, good contrast, good variegation kind of across the board, so it hasn't lost anything yet. 
and they've all been significantly bigger one after the other. The other reason this was this was pushing against the top of my prop box pretty hard, so it really wants out. It needs to go live in my tent, I think, at this point. So the roots are looking pretty good. Ooh, that's those nice white roots. I like to see that. A little bit of algae in there. I can kind of clean that out a bit. It's got my skewer that's still in there, which is going to go in a second. I think what I'll do here, so you can see the roots looking pretty good. Those are nice and white, and they're already kind of creeping out of the pot. I don't really want to repot this just today. I think I'm going to put, what kind of pole size are we looking for here? I think this may be too big. This will probably last until I repot it. Unlike the other pole that I just put on here, which I sat at the bottom of the net pot. In this case, I don't want to unpot the entire plant. I'll use these tabs to sit it right along the top here. Well, at least let's try. And this is just a 12 inch. This should sit kind of like around here and give me hopefully another month or two before I have to repot it. But at least it'll be happy on a pole in the meantime. So let's let's do that. I'll start off by taking off the plant tape. I think the plant tape was starting to constrict at the bottom here, which is not great. The internodal space on this guy is super tight, which means that it's doing pretty good. It's even got some aerials starting to form there. On my heavily vining Lechleriana green that I have in my second grow tent, which is mostly where I keep my rehabs and things like that. My second grow tent is more of a garden grow tent and it's not nearly as nice as my gorilla grow tent. I use that for plants I don't care about as much, plants that I'm in the middle of propagating, some rehabby type projects, and then some of the vining stuff that's going crazy in there. And I have a few Hoyas in there that are just kind of loving life because they are so close to the light. So this guy, his compatriot slash sibling plant is living in that tent right now and has just gone vining like crazy. I won't show you because it's pretty ugly with the kind of condition it's in but trust me on the fact that the internodal space is not nearly as tight as this guy that is some really tight internal space and also there's aerial roots actually no it's just straight up rooted uh, which is really nice too so I'm gonna let this continue doing what it's doing for now I want this to size up to a point where I can take some big props off the top and then let it continue going along with its current state this is looking really nice so far so I don't want to mess with it too much so let's take out this existing pole that's in here, hopefully without damaging the root system too badly. Twisting seems to be the magic touch to get this kind of thing out. There we go. So you see these skewers are great for like short-term use, but the minute you leave them in for a while, like a couple months, they tend to just kind of turn to mush. So yeah, that's it's already gone. So it was time to switch that out anyways. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this alone. You can see the aerials are looking really good on there. And these aerials have already just kind of dug in there. The project now is to figure out how I'm going to tuck this in. I think I can't really fit anything larger than a small pole in here to begin with. And what we'll do here is just fold this guy up, just like I did with the other one, hopefully with less trouble. And just trying to sneak it in on the side so that it just leans against it. And this will serve me for a couple of months until I pot this to a larger size. Good. Easy peasy. You see that guy? So we got the two honeycombs across the front there, and it's only got the one notch, so it fits pretty well. So what I'm gonna do is try and squeeze this in. So I'm gonna let some of the leca out from the top here, and possibly push this back up a little bit. I, I don't want to disturb the roots too much. So I'm just gonna kind of dig out what's sitting at the top, and then see if I can squeeze this pole in without hurting anything. Pick out some of the leca here. I'm not gonna take too much out, just enough so that I can lean it a little bit and squeeze the pole in the bottom. And then I'll top it off with some fresh leca. The other thing is that I need to run wicks through here, which is gonna be a bit of a problem, so I'm gonna have to fish the wick through. Thankfully in this pot, I actually have wicking that goes all the way through here. I think just in this specific case here, I think I'm gonna have to run the wicking on the outside because digging it through the pot is gonna be difficult. So I want to do this without like uprooting the entire plant. I do have to make room to fit this pole in. I'm going to wrap the wicks around kind of in the middle of the leca, and I think I'm going to run one inside and one outside just so I get some water flow here. But it's not ideal. If I were doing this properly, I would be putting the wicking through like I did with the other one, running it all the way through to the bottom. But in this case, I really don't want to disturb the root system today. So I'm going to run one around the base of the plant kind of part way down so we get some of the existing moisture and one on the outside just straight into the water. So why don't we do that here? I'm going to use a bit of the skinnier wicking, I think. This is the one-sixth of an inch. So I'm going to use some of this stuff. Yeah, you know what I'll do is I'll run this through the top layer of holes here. And I just squeeze it through right at the top. 
got enough room to run it through the outside there. Okay, good. And that actually gives me room to move this guy over a little bit too. Okay, so now I can cut my wicking. Maybe I should actually use the thicker stuff here. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna use the thicker stuff because I can fit it. And I have enough room for it. All right, so I've got my two wicks, one slightly longer, one slightly shorter. There we go. Run those both through. Keep the same amount extended at the top. And again, I'm gonna like take a little piece of plant tape and tie these guys at the top here so they're not in the way. I'll just do one on either side. Now, this is the simplest way to have them not fall back into the pot immediately. There, that's good. That one's gonna go down all the way down to the bottom. And that one's gonna sit in the substrate. So let's run this guy on the outside. Get him all the way down there. So the one thing with having wicking sitting in the leka is just that it tends to get grown into by the plant. So I'm gonna run this down the side. I have room here to pull them through. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm pulling this guy down on the outside and I'm gonna run one around on the inside and wrap it around. So I'm running this guy below the plant and kind of running him through the existing roots and leka that's currently there. I'm just going to tuck him down a little bit. And this guy, he's going to run all the way through and then I'll adjust the positioning afterwards. So that guy's going to go all the way down into the water this way. A little bit of slack. That's good. Now I think we can seat this. And then we're going to tie the plant up to this leka pole. So I'll take some of my Velcro tape. So I think the only space I've got to work with is this top internodal space up here to wrap the plant tape around. And that'll be my anchor point. And you can see there's like, there's some good roots. Like the, the roots are looking really good all the way down. These are super tight internal spaces. There's a nice yellow root right there. That looks like it's gonna do really well. I've got my one top wick here wrapping around the kind of middle to top part of the hopefully damp leka. And then I've got the other one running down the outside of the net pot, but still into my nutrient liquid. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is tie this guy up. Let's make sure I've got enough first. I'm just gonna thread this through. I wanna try and center the latest growth point on the center of the pole. I don't really have a great spot to anchor this pole, so I'm just gonna hope that the leka does the work here. So I'm just gonna chop this. We got a bit of extra. That's okay. I'm hoping if I can tuck this in that the leka will hold this guy in because I don't really have much of a choice. Normally I would anchor him in there a little more snugly with a zip tie, but since he's kind of sitting on top here, that's really the best I can do. So I'm gonna make sure that A, our leaves are not in the leka, so that's good. Let's pull this up a little bit. And B, it's gonna backfill like that. And then I'll fill up the pole afterwards. This is the original leka I took out, this bottom leaf. It's, it's not the healthiest bottom leaf, but it's still on there and it's still photosynthesizing, so I may as well keep it intact. I have a little extra now because the pole's in the way. I'm gonna use that to fill up the pole. And yes, stuff is gonna fall out. There's no getting around that. Again, I don't need to fill the pole to the top because it's not all the way there yet, but I will kind of backfill this pole as we go on. I'm just gonna give a little bit more slack to the wicking inside here. So it's got a little more room to move. I want them to kind of sag around and, and weave through there. So right now this is not the straightest, but I think give it a little bit more support. And hopefully once the plant is anchored in there, it will be growing in the right direction. And I've got more like over here that I'm just kind of filling up with. Again, not ideal because I'm kind of attaching this to a plant that was already rooted in this pot and I'm not repotting it, but it should work for the time being. I don't want this new leaf to get crushed either, so I kind of want him to sit on top. And I'm gonna fill up some more of this pole. Do this facing you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Looks like the Lekka's getting a little caught on some of this wicking, which is fine. It's kind of the point, actually. I just want it to like sit on there and I want the wicking to be woven in pretty good amongst the Lekka. So I think this will hold reasonably well. I'm just gonna pop a couple more pieces of Lekka behind to hold it up because again, not ideal, but it works for the time being. And then when I repot this next, I will put this pole in properly and anchor it correctly. Kind of like what I did with my Monstera Alba over there. I've still got this leaf is sitting a little low for my liking, but it's pretty good. I'm gonna feed this guy a little bit more nutrient solution and I'm gonna wet the pole, which is the, also the most important part here is to make sure that this pole is wet. 
pour some nutrient solution into the pole. This guy has been sitting in nutrient solution. Uh, some of those roots have been sitting there already, so they're completely used to it at this point. And I find that Monsteras are reasonably happy in nutrient solution. So there we go. We are all pulled up. Maybe not the prettiest, but this will work for now. It definitely isn't super straight, but it'll hold until I get a chance to repot this guy properly. And until it really needs it. I think for now, I want to see it kind of adapt to this pole first, and then we'll go from there. So here we go. New leaf coming in here. I've just kind of pulled it up top a little bit. And there we go. Where's the wicking sitting in there? Should keep things nice and moist. And there it is. So it's just kind of sitting on top. It's buried about a half an inch to an inch, which is not the greatest. Um, normally I would bury it all the way down to the bottom of the net pot and it would be a lot more solid in there, but this will do for now. And there we go. Everything's nicely anchored against it and we should see it grow on this pole. All right, so we're two for two on Monsteras. I think we might be able to go three for three. So I'll do the reveal on the next guy who is sitting beside me in this box and you might be able to make out what he is. And if you read the title of the video, you probably already know what this is. I don't need trumpet sounds for you right now, but let me pull this guy out. And this is a Monstera Burly Marks Flame. And if you are not familiar with this plant, and this is a pretty small juvenile sized guy, but this plant, uh, it, right now it actually has a similar growth habit to the Lechleriana here, but in terms of how it's climbing this skewer that I also put in there, this guy needs a full repot and he also needs a Leca pole like his brethren over here. So the Monstera Burly Marks Flame, there's not a whole lot of information available on this plant. The larger, more mature sized leaves look fantastic it's like crazy flame like and eventually it starts to look a little bit more like a deliciosa when it's really at like it's kind of larger mature size but in the juvenile form and kind of that medium size when it's still growing like the teen years it's got this crazy like claw flame thing going on which looks really spectacular and it's the little tiny leaves at this point this monstera comes from brazil or at least that's where it was originally found in the collection of roberto burley marx who was a world famous landscape architect but also a, an ecologist and an artist and a, a pretty well-known plant collector there's also the philodendron burly marks which is in this case the burly marks variegated form which i this is just a cutting that i've got has no real bearing on the burly marks flame there's also the burly marks fantasy which also looks nothing like this one i don't know the origins of those ones besides the botanical names include the same attributed author but in this case this specific plant was found in his collection i think it was in his estate upon his death that's kind of what i gathered from where i read it there wasn't a whole lot of detail it's mentioned in the aeroid cultivar registry as an accepted cultivar it does have some resemblance when it's mature like i said to the uh, Monstera deliciosa, I think Var Sirana, which is just a synonym of deliciosa. I'd say that the larger mature leaves probably have more of a similarity to deliciosa, except much, much more fenestrated. Just the gaps between fenestrations are, are much larger, but there's definitely like kind of a similarity in the leaf shape. But besides that, it doesn't really have a whole lot in common. I'd say the growth habit is probably similar in terms of like how it has pretty tight internal space. At least in this type of size, it probably grows similarly to a smaller deliciosa. I mean, once they get a bit bigger, it might be a different story. I'll have to see for myself because I've never had one before. So this is all new to me. So this guy I picked up recently. I'm just going to start unpotting it while we talk here. This one I picked up, like I said, a couple months back from a local plant collector who was reducing some of his collection because he needed to make more space in his apartment because he had a baby on the way. I gladly helped out by taking this one off his hands. He got a pretty good deal on it. I didn't have to win an auction for it, but I think it was still pretty reasonable, all things considered. I've seen smaller cuttings, like mid cuts, that would probably be like one leaf out of this guy go for more than this entire plant that cost me. There's actually one listed on Monstera X right now. A single listing for a single node cutting that is about 50% more than I paid for this. So I think I got a reasonable price and they're still going for pretty high prices, kind of mid hundreds. They were like in the 2000 plus range, Canadian at least, last year. And before that, even more. So the prices have come down pretty dramatically since then, but I think it's still, uh, A, as far as I understand, not the easiest plant to propagate, uh, very slow grower, and B, there's just not that many of them floating around yet. So this guy actually has a pretty good aerial root that's buried here, that's a good sign. I'm gonna start on potting this guy. Let's see what kind of condition we're in. It's in a pretty <laughs> very loose, chunky aeroid mix, which is much nicer than 
the mix that my uh, elbow was in there. This should be quite a bit simpler for me to get ready for semi-hydro. There's a bit of bark on here that's really tied into the roots. Oh, this is actually the original cutting, so there you go. This here, you can see there's probably like two nodes. That was the original cut, and this guy must have been a mid-cut off of there. So the mix this guy's in looks like a combination of, I wanna say like orchid bark, cocoa husk for sure, some chunky perlite, maybe pumice. There might be a bit of soil mixed in there, and some sphagnum peat potentially typical heroid mix very dry comes off super easily i don't think that the root structure is particularly huge here but i think for the size of plant it's reasonable and this should lend itself well to popping into semi-hydro so i'm just going to pluck the roots clean here i'll give them a wash and i'll come back in a second 20 minutes later okay and i'm back our roots are cleaned and washed i give this guy a thorough soak for about 15 minutes in warm water and then i give it a good scrub down with a pretty soft brush toothbrush so see now these are a lot whiter these look pretty healthy across the board i have a couple little root tips they look just kind of dried out this isn't rotten this is just looks like it's been dried the substrate was really dry um, even though i did actually water it yesterday so I'm going to take off a couple of these little bits that are gone because they are completely dried out. Uh, again, if I had some myco on me, that, this would be the time to use it. I will have to wait another week or so until mine shows up. A couple of little dried out roots from the original cutting, which you can see a lot more clearly now. That cutting was this guy here. It looks like there was probably two nodes on it. This may have been... Uh, spent note I'm not sure but this is the one that definitely grew it out and there you go that's the original plant that kind of grew out of there and so I've got my you know about two inches a little bit more three inches worth of stem and six leaves off of that that's pretty good the, the internodal space is pretty tight but I think it's relatively easy to propagate I mean there's enough room in there to definitely to give it a cut so you can see already there's a couple of good roots here that are at individual nodes that I could probably cut if I wanted to uh, these are kind of tied together, but I think I could probably chop this one if I wanted to. But I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this start to root up the rest of the stem here a bit more. I'm going to let him get a little bit bigger before I cut him, but I don't really want to wait too long because I don't know how long the market for these guys is going to last. And while they're still selling for a decent amount of money, I'd like to at least make my money back on this guy. So I will be chopping it hopefully in the next month or two. I'll see if I can let it get another leaf, acclimate to the new environments, to the new pole that I'm going to put it on, and uh, into semi-hydro and see if it sizes up a little bit in the process. So let's get this thing into a pot. Once again, I'm looking at my available pots and I think the one that's going to work for me here is probably the one that I originally used for my elbow over here as well. I think just for the same exact reason as that I'm going to need to put a pole on this guy. Don't know that I need the exact same pole size. I'm going to kind of hold it up here and see. I don't know if it's worth putting it onto the taller pole yet or to go with the smaller one to start off. Might be a little overkill, but you know, look how tall he is already. I don't know. I'm going to play it by ear. I've got the same pot. This guy here, this is a six and two thirds inch self-watering pot. I'm going to grab a couple of poles here and see which one suits my fancy more than the other. Uh, let's see here. I think this feels like overkill for the size that it's currently at, but I am anticipating this guy to grow a decent amount and probably that internodal space to grow as well. So I think I might go with the taller just to give it a little bit of room to grow. And I assume it's going to get reasonably large. I mean, this is not gigantic. I'm always kind of conservative with my pole sizes, but you know, let's give this guy a try. I'm gonna do this on the tightest notch again, just for the sake of not having to use too much LECA in there. And I mean, for these guys, I, I use LECA for my monsteras pretty exclusively. I mean, outside of cuttings, but even then, like, unless they're really tiny cuttings, all the monsteras I've had so far, like the Peru, the Lechleriana, the Dulciosa, Pinata Partita, what else do I have? I think I have an Oreo Pinata as well. All of them like LECA. So I'm going to stick with the LECA while it serves me. I haven't really had much of a problem with the LECA with these guys. If the root systems on these guys were any smaller, I'd probably lean towards pond. But since they all have pretty thick, juicy roots, the LECA works pretty well. I might try a, a LECA perlite combo. I know um, Chris with Pretty in Plants uses that pretty much for all of his Monsteras, at least the ones that he shows on his channel, in his grow space. And I think that's an interesting combination that I've used for other plants, but not for Monstera. I might try it with this guy once I upplot him in a couple of months, just to see what it works like. You know, for the time being, it's just like a plane. I don't really feel like experimenting with one of my more higher end plants that I spent more on. <laughs> 
I'm gonna not risk it with this guy, but you know, we'll see how things go. I'll try it with something a little less fancy first, and then we'll uh, take it up a notch when I feel a bit more comfortable with the combination. So let's get this guy wired up in the pot. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to uh, zip tie this guy on. All right, so this time around, I staggered them a little bit. I've got one kind of narrower and one wider. I'm not sure if I like that or not, but you know, I don't wanna waste the zip tie. So I'm gonna try it and see how it goes. See there, just kind of did them a little wider at the top. <laughs> This is just pure experimentation at this point, so I don't know if it's worth And I think we are good to go. All right, I have my pot, I have my pole ready to go. I have my wicking is what I need next. So I'm gonna grab the thicker wicking. Let's just do the same trick here of feeding it through. And we'll cut two of these the same length. So pull that through. I want it to kind of hit the bottom of the pot and circle a little bit. So I'm already over and I'd probably give it another inch down here. And then I want to have a bit of slack inside the pole. That gives it a decent amount of slack and then I want another, I don't know, three or four inches outside the pot. So I'll put that here. All right, so there we go. Got our second wick going down through here. And like I said before, I've used this for a number of pots so far with this Leka wicking situation and so far it's keeping things reasonably moist in there so i'm decently impressed with it i didn't think it would necessarily work as well as it has but it's it's doing what i want it to do so i think what i'll do is i'm going to pull this taut at first put my leka in so let's put this in the pot so i can get a sense of where we're at okay i'm gonna start loading up some leka i've got my pre-washed leka again don't need to soak it just rinse it, get the dust off. If you used it before, you might want to think about boiling it, but in my case, it's been sitting out dry for a long time. I gave it a rinse just to be sure, get some of the dust off. So I'm gonna set this up at the bottom. I'm also gonna use plant tape, again, to hold this guy up here. I just wanna see about where it's gonna sit. You can see where the growth habit is here. It's kind of coming up and the stem is there. This is where we're gonna try and just kind of pose it in a position where it's pretty happy. So when you're dealing with leka and wicking, you want to make sure that you have like a decent amount of flex inside the container itself. What I do is I kind of layer in, like, uh, I put a base layer, I move the wicks around a little bit so that they're covering a decent amount of surface area in there. And I don't lose too much up here. I'm going to be careful not to kind of run it off the top. You know, I'll tie these guys up right around here so that they're not in the way and that they don't slide down. I think the worst thing with these poles is if you let the wick slide down, you gotta do it all over again. So I'm gonna kind of give these guys a little bit more slack inside the container. That looks all right. I think I can pull this one up a little bit. Okay, looking good in there. Now I'm gonna pop the plant in and I'm gonna sit him on top. Get the roots kind of situated in a way where they're not really too close to the wicking and get him set up so he can grow as vertically as he can go, which is like, yeah, there, I think. And we want to make sure all the roots are covered and that the crown of the plant is not too covered up. So I think that's about right. right. So well, this is just kind of starting to hold by itself here. I'm going to use a bit of plant tape at the bottom to anchor this guy loosely, just so he's kind of not pinned, but holding to the pole. You always want a little bit of uh, extra just because a, the plant's going to grow so that piece is going to thicken up. And B, just so you can kind of undo it, move it around, loosen it up if you need to. I'll put a second piece of plant tape on a little bit higher up where I kind of want it to, to stick. So that's good. And now I'm going to layer on some more Leka here. Kind of cover up the base of the pole. Cover up the base of the plant to a decent amount. And then the rest of this is going to go into the pole. And that'll fill the pole from the base. So let's once again do this full filling business. It reminds me of a gumball machine for some reason. So, eh, we're okay, we're hitting ground level there. All right, so I'm back, I've got some more Leka here. If you're familiar with using Leka, or if you're not familiar with using Leka, I'm pretty sure you would have seen something like this. See how white that Leka is? It's got quite a bit of white powder on it, it almost looks like mildew. This is actually like evaporation on drying Leka at the top of a pot, and this is like salt buildup. So when they tell you to flush your Leka, this is why you get this kind of thing happening. So if you use the hydroponics products a decent amount, you're probably familiar with something like this, um, this Flora Clean, which you can basically soak your Leka in this. I don't know what the percentage is, but you soak it in there 
and it basically just cleans it for you. I think you can actually run it through hydroponic systems is what it's designed for to do kind of a big flush out as well. You can use it to flush your Leka if you want to. I'm not a huge fan of that like on a regular basis. I use it kind of when I have a big bucket of Leka I want to clean. For just general purpose, I'll give it a good rinse. <laughs> I have this baby bottle brush that I've had for the last decade now that I think dates back to my first kid and it has no purpose anymore so I just use this for cleaning plant stuff because it's green and it looks interesting. Also it does a really good job so you throw a bunch of Leka into one of these net pots. I use one of the bigger net pots. Throw a little soap on there and just scrub around and it gets a lot of the outer layer of mineral buildup off pretty easily and it also gets a lot of things like algae off and it gets a lot of the leftover Leka dust off so it, it does a pretty good job. So if you're in a bit of a hurry and you want to clean some Leka fast and you don't need tons and tons of it, that, that does the job pretty well. So I would suggest if you've got an option, that's not a bad one to use. So I'm not going to use this piece of Leka that's all covered in gunk there. The stuff I've got is nice and clean. We're going to fill this up now. So let's fill it top off with these poles. Yeah, I mean, you kind of want to use larger Leka balls if you can. I don't have a ton of options here. Like the, the bigger pieces can to mix pretty heavily in there with the smaller pieces. So I'm doing my best to load it up with the bigger pieces so they don't easily fall through the holes. But the holes in these larger poles are big enough that pretty much every size of Leka that I've got is going to go through there. There is larger Leka that you can use. It's not as easy to find. I accidentally got some a couple of times and I've got some, I think, I don't know if I got it from that. Ikea. Ikea sells Leka under the label, I think it's like Odla or something like that. I'll link it if I can. But this Leka that I picked up is Leaflor brand that you can get in big 50 liter bags. Uh, I picked mine up from a local shop, but they're available on Amazon as well. And we're actually holding in pretty good. So now what I do is I typically just kind of like pick out the bits of Leka that are jammed in here and just kind of tuck those in the bottom. So it kind of holds that plant tape in place. I don't really want it leaning against the petioles of any of the lower leaves either, but I will kind of use it to prop up the base of the pole and where the plant tape is kind of holding on there. So uh, that looks pretty good. So I'll just use a few of the larger pieces that I've got here to supplement. And you kind of wait for it to just fall into place eventually. It'll kind of hold itself in place. Sometimes it's not cooperating the most fully. And you just gotta keep going until it just sits right. It's like a combination of like Connect 4 and a gumball machine here. But it does work and you'll get what you want eventually. Just gotta be patient. Once it starts to root, you're in pretty good shape there and things will hold on on their own at that point, which is nice. Uh, until then, you just gotta wait for it to sort of settle in and not rattle it around too much. I think we're in good shape here. I'll just kinda top off the bottom so it looks all right. You definitely don't wanna cover up the stem at all. Just want to make sure that it's sitting comfortably in here. And then I'm going to fill this guy up with some water and we're good. All right, looking nice. I think I could probably straighten this out a little bit more. So I kind of reseeded this guy a little bit. I'm just now putting another piece of plant tape where I kind of want the top node to sit, which is right against the leka of about an inch and a half higher up here. So kind of threw another piece of plant tape on. You can see what I've done there. It's sitting a little bit higher up, putting the top node where I want it. I'm gonna tighten this a little bit because it's got a little bit of give. All right, I think I'm satisfied here. That looks pretty good. It's anchored pretty well. It's reasonably straight, and I think it'll keep happily growing in there. So I'm gonna fill this guy up with nutrient solution. I think I'm just gonna center it on that little water gauge at the bottom. Just gonna fill this guy up. Here's nutrient solution. So I could do another video at some point and talk about nutrient solution, but mine does actually contain rapid start, which I think I did talk about in a previous video. If I haven't talked about it yet, this is the general hydroponics rapid start. It's a rooting hormone liquid, works with semi-hydro. You can just use it when you're watering as well if you want. I typically use the more kind of the normal concentration with seedlings and things like that and with cuttings i don't use the more aggressive concentration in this case it's just like the regular concentration and it's in here as well so i'm just going to give this a bit more and then i'm going to water the pole a little bit just to make sure we're in pretty good shape so the one thing i didn't really do is give this a bit more slack inside kind of loosen this guy a little bit up tie this up so yeah, a little pro tip is to like Velcro tape these wicks at the top because otherwise if you lose them, getting them back up again is a real pain in the ass. I'm going to water in my pole a bit. I'm just going to adjust the wicks in here a little bit because they're kind of both on one side. So the other nice thing about these poles is that you can kind of water straight into them and you don't have to worry too much about any water leaking out the sides or out the back. So I can just straight line water in there and the water that hits 
kind of goes through the leka and hits the back and just goes straight down to the pot so I'm I'm not losing water or over spraying too badly. Actually these pots are, are so thin that I can see the water level through the actual pot which is pretty funny. I'm not sure if you can see that with the light there. Right now I'm about maybe a centimeter and a half up from the bottom of the net pot which is just below where I had my roots which is kind of right around here which is perfect so I'm just gonna let it sit like that. That way once the water level drains down a bit uh, it'll start wicking up instead of actually hitting the LECA and using the LECA's capillary action. In this case, it'll wick first and then use the LECA capillary action. So I'm pretty happy with this plant now. Maybe a little bit lopsided on the pole, but hopefully it'll straighten out naturally. And I can always help it out with a bit of plant tape on the way through. I guess the actual stem itself was not 100% straight to begin with. All right, so I think we're looking pretty good here. I'm pretty happy with the outcome of this Monstera Burley Marks Flame. Looking nice in its new environment here. I think I'm going to uh, pop them into my grow tent in this new situation here. Take a look at him in his final glory. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the outcome of this uh, repotting slash Lekka pole experiment here. I think everything looks pretty happy. I'm gonna have to throw all these guys into my grow tent and see how they behave over the next couple of months. Hopefully this was educational, enlightening, if nothing else, slightly entertaining. And if you have any questions about the plants or about the care for these plants, please feel free to drop those in the comments below. If you like this kind of content, I'd love it if you would like the video and subscribe to the channel. It gives me a good sense of whether or not you guys are enjoying it and it does help the channel grow. So anything you can do to help would be fantastic. I also have a bunch of anthurium seedlings that are all currently on the go. It should be quite interesting if you've never dealt with Ethereum seedlings. I did quite a lot of transplanting and repotting of those guys. That should be some fun to look at. And I have an allocation video that should be a lot of fun because we're going to do some corm hunting. Uh, if you've never hunted for allocation corms, I've got a few larger allocations in my tent that are for sure they have a decent amount of corms floating around or already popping some new leaves soon that I need to transplant. Some good ones in there too. I've got some variegated allocations that you may or may not have seen before. Not your typical fried eggs, but some other stuff that I've got that I picked up recently. So please do come back, subscribe for those. You'll see them in the next few weeks. So I'm Nick from Propist. Thank you again for being here. Really appreciate your time. I hope you can join me for future videos. I will see you next time. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks again for being here.